Hi folks, Jonathan here from Delicious Brains. Today I'm going to be taking you through how you can use XDebug and PHPStorm to find bugs in your code. I'm not going to run through the installation of XDebug today, but if you go to the Zero Debugging Configuration article on the PHPStorm help box, you'll find a link to XDebug where you can install it. It has binaries for Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. And you can also see how to configure things. So it talks about setting up uh, xdebug in your PHP INI file and then configuring it in PHP Storm. If you don't know where your PHP INI file is, the easiest way is to create a PHP file containing the PHP info function and open that in your browser. I usually always have one set up locally, so let's take a look at that. You can see my default PHP INI file is here. On my setup, I have a slightly different configuration. I have a custom user.ini file where I store any custom PHP INI settings. So instead of editing the main PHP INI file, I'm going to show you my custom user.ini. In your case, you could either configure your setup to use a custom file or just add this to the PHP INI file. And then you'll see I've got some custom configurations set up, and I've also got xdebug set up, pointing the Zend extension variable to the xdebug path, and I've set the xdebug mode to debug. I've also kept my version 2 xdebug settings here just as a reference point, so if you're working on xdebug version 2, it might need to look something like this. Fortunately, everything is uh, listed for you in the zero debugging configuration article, so if you need to know how to set things up for different versions, you can click through to any of these links. Um, and P uh, JetBrains does show you there's version 2 and there's version 3, for example. Okay, once you've installed and configured xdebug, you just want to check that it's working. So you can either run PHP version on the command line. Which does show me that xdebug version 303 is installed. Or you can check your PHP info page again. Let's do a quick search for xdebug. And there it is. So now I know it's installed and configured. My PHP environment can use it. I can start using it in PHP Storm. The other thing that's handy to install is the browser bookmark extensions or tabs. Um, in, I'll find the link for that quickly. There we go. So under activate debugger on the server, you click on the browser debugging extensions. You can install extensions for Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, or Opera. Internet Explorer and Opera, they're actually not extensions. They're little uh, bookmarks. Uh, but for the other three, they're a, they're a toggle on and off. And basically what that does is that toggles uh, the xdebug debugging session on or off uh, on your server. You can also do this via the command line, but I prefer to do it in the browser. In Firefox, what this does is it adds this little uh, debugging option here to your address bar and you can then click on it to turn debugging on profiling on or disable everything this is great because i generally leave this off and then only turn it on on a per site level in php storm the other thing you need to do once you've configured xdebug is set php storm to start listening for uh, debug connections by clicking on run and then clicking on the start listening for php debug connections option you'll see mine is set to stop because i have this on all the time so what I tend to do is I leave this on and then I just enable debugging from the browser using my browser extension. So let's have a look at a problem that we want to debug and fix. On my site, I have a very simple submission form. You'll see it just takes a name and an email address. Currently, it doesn't have any styling, which is why it looks terrible. But it takes the name and email address, stores it to a table in the database, and then it displays it in an admin dashboard menu item in the WordPress dashboard. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's the dashboard page. It's just basically a list of all form submissions. I can also delete them from this page. When I submit the form, I expect to see a success message. And when I, if anything goes wrong, I expect to see an error message. So let's submit this form and see what happens. Okay, I've submitted the form and I'm getting the error message. So one of two things is happening. Either this form is not submitting or it is submitting and I'm getting the wrong message. So let's take a look at the admin page. 
And there we go. We can see the form is submitting and it is storing the data to the database. So that means somewhere along the line, my code is breaking and it's not showing me the correct page. Let's have a look at the code. So I do happen to know that this form hooks into the WP action um, and then runs this maybe process form function, which checks if the form is being posted, checks if the non nonce fields are set up, gets the name and email variable, inserts the data into the database, and then depending on the success, returns true or false. Now, if you were doing good old fashioned dump debugging, you might start doing something like this. You might do a bar dump of the success, refresh the page, see what that's doing. If it was coming back as false, you might then go and look into the insert data function and start digging through those things and start debugging, uh, dumping things and seeing what was going on. We don't, want to, we don't want to worry about doing that. We want to inspect what's going on. We want to see what's happening. So I'm pretty sure that this function is where things are failing. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right at the start of this function so that I can step through the code and see what's going on. I create a breakpoint by clicking in the gutter area just between the, if you've got your um, code numbering enabled, between the code numbering and the actual code. So I just click there and it creates a little red debug breakpoint. Now make sure that my site debugging is enabled, which it is, and I'm going to refresh the page. You'll see that immediately PHP Storm comes up. Um, it has the debugger toolbar enabled, oh, the debugger um, status bar enabled at the bottom. Um, if this was the first time I was running PHP uh, debugging on this site, it would give me a path mapping screen. Uh, you can generally just accept the defaults for that path mapping. That's basically just telling PHP Storm when this server URL, URL runs, which uh, folder location of PHP files do I need to uh, work with? You'll see in the debugger, I've got the plugin code running. I've got all the hooks and things that are fired to get to this point. It's, the stack trace goes all the way back to the index.php file, which is the main file for the WordPress site. I've got any global variables that have already, already been set up. So cookies and files and get and posts and all those kind of things. And I've also got a watch that I was watching on a previous project, so I'm going to remove that one for now. The code has paused where I set the breakpoint. You'll see the breakpoint is highlighted. It's telling me what's happening in the post. Currently, there doesn't seem to be anything in that post. So now we can start stepping through this and seeing what goes on. I'm just going to step over this code and kind of get an idea of what's happening. Okay, so because nothing's been posted, it's returning empty, and it'll just carry on doing my code. Now, I haven't submitted the form, so I don't need to see what's going on. I just wanted to show you what it looked like in PHP Storm. So now let's run through that again. It's going to check that every time. So we'll come back over here. Let's submit the form and see what happens. This time when I submit, now the post array should have some information. So it's got my nonce field got the referrer, it's got the form submission. If we scroll over to right, let's actually remove this quickly. There's the name, Paul Jones, and the email submitted. So now I know that I'm going to be stepping into this code. These things are set, so let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to step over that. Okay, so it's checking the nonce field. I'm pretty sure that's working fine. But let's check. Yep, it went over that, no problem. Okay, so now it's getting the name. That should be fine. What I can do now at this point is if I want to watch the name variable, I can select it, right click and say add to watches. You'll see there currently name doesn't have anything, but as soon as I step over that code, it's going to show me that name has now changed to Paul Jones. This is a great way of monitoring variables as they change through your code and seeing if something's changing that you're not expecting. Do the same for email. Okay, email is great. Let's add email to watches as well so we can keep an eye on that. Great, email is, is paul at gmail, so that's good. Right, now we're getting to the success. So this next function is going to insert the data and return something to the success variable. So far, everything's working fine. So probably the, the problem is inside this insert data function. So now I want to step into this code and see what's happening there. You'll see it immediately takes me to that insert data function. The name and email variables are set up. You can see they're displayed here beside the function. They're also in my watches, so I can keep an eye on them there. And now I can step through this code. Okay, setting up the global variable, I'm happy with that. Table name should be fine. I'm not gonna watch table name because I'm happy that it's going to be the form submissions, but I can also keep an eye on it up here. You can see as well, I've got the WPDB object and that's showing me what's going on over there. Okay, setting up my query, so that should be fine. 
Okay, the prepare statement. Now I could, if I wanted to, dig into this code. Uh, this is a WordPress core function, so I'm pretty sure this is fine the way I'm using it. But if anything was going wrong here, I could step into this, but I'm happy that I'm going to jump over that. Then it runs the query. Okay, so the query is going to be insert into table name, etc, etc, etc. And then I'm going to get a result. So let's watch result and see what happens to that. Okay, result is currently nothing. So let's step over that. Okay, so result is currently set to 1. The reason it's set to 1 is because it's returning the fact that one record has been inserted and it's returning true. Okay, if it's set to 1. So let's see what happens there. Okay, it's jumping over that and it's setting it to 2. Now, why is that happening? Well, the code is saying if result is greater than 1. And result in this case is exactly 1. So it looks like this is where my code is breaking. But I'm not 100% sure of that. So let's go back out of this. So let's step out of this code and just make sure. Okay, it comes back to here. So now in this case, success. Let's have a look at success. It's probably going to be false. Yes, so success is false, which it shouldn't be because the, res uh, the data was inserted and I got a result of one. So now I've got a good idea where my code is breaking. But now I want to check that if I do set success to true, it will redirect to the success page. So I can go in here and I can say... Set value. There we go. Set value. That's what I need. Okay, you can't do it from the watches, but in the variables list, you can say set value. So what I want to do now is I want to set this to true. Just to make sure that if I set it to true, it's going to show me the correct page. And now I'm going to, now that I've changed this, now I'm going to step, in, step into this code and see what happens. And there we go. So because success is true, it's now going to show me the success page. Let's run this to the end of the cursor and see if that is indeed the case. And there we go. I'm seeing the submission form. So now I know where my code is breaking. Okay, we stepped through. We figured it was over here somewhere. It was when result was being returned. Result is returning a, a, a value of one because one record is being inserted. My code, however, is checking if the result is greater than one, return true. In this case, it's not. Otherwise, return false. So what I can do now is I can change this to if result is equal to exactly one, then return true. Actually, that's, that's giving me an error because I need to go. So if result is exactly equal to one, then return true, otherwise return false. Now, what I could do is I could step through my code again and make sure this is happening. But I'm pretty confident this is going to fix it. So I'm going to take the breakpoint away and do a new submission. Okay, so let's try James. And there we go. My submission has been captured. Let's check in the admin page. There we go. So there's an example of how you can use Xdebug to set a breakpoint, step through your code, make a change to the variable to make sure that you've isolated the correct problem and fix it.